No, 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 that's not right. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, hey, and hey, what's up and how's it going, all in my beers? <laughs> I am Mike McRock from the McRock and Bolt Wrestling Review Show, and last night, WWE Monday Night Raw wrapped up, and overall, I thought this was an almost perfect Monday Night Raw. It really followed WrestleMania 30, and with that being said, the way the show started was really, really great, because you had... Uh, you had WrestleMania 30 wrap up on the high note of Daniel Bryan becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So, rightfully so, the show started with a video package of where Daniel Bryan, how Daniel Bryan started and where he is now. It was well done. You had Daniel Bryan come out, he cut a really good promo. He uh, talked about how the fans have all the power and, uh, about uh, he was talking about the whole yes movement and how the yes chant the uh, whole yes chant started, as well as uh, last night becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Championship as well, and it, it was pretty much the fans, and that really good feel moment, just really putting Daniel Bryan over like a million bucks here. It was great, outstanding to see. And you had Triple H, of all people, the shit disturber, if you will, and Stephanie McMahon came out. Uh, he basically says that I'm going to put a, put an end to all this. He's yelling at Daniel Bryan here, and I'm going to uh, put myself into a uh, championship match later on uh, in the main event. So they're leaving something open after the first segment. I thought it was well done. It was well planned out. And backstage, you had Randy Orton and Batista complaining to Stephanie McMahon, saying that they should be in the um, title match. And Steph says that um, uh, you two have to work together, and I will put you in a match against the users for the tag team titles. And they basically really don't want th those belts because, you know, uh, it, it, it's one of those things where um, they're... Uh, uh, they're like a step down. Uh, this is Stephanie McMahon treating Bra Orton and Batista like crap, uh, telling them you have to step down for uh, for a night and uh, the tag team together and uh, beat the Usos. And they really didn't want the tag team titles because they feel like it was a step down for them. And this match I thought was actually well played as well. You had. Uh, that tag team title match and it was pretty much Randy Orton and Batista at the end uh, getting disqualified or double counted out or whatever it was and basically squashing the Uso saying you know what we, we don't want the uh, titles but we want to make a statement I think they've done that very well and I like the position that Randy Orton and Batista are in now because you can see that there's some sort of evolution reuniting involving that will result to the end of the show which like I said I will get to later on we also ended up having a, a six-man tag team match John Cena Biggie Langs and Sheamus versus the Wyatt family I thought this was the match of the night it was a really great match and Biggie Langston had his good strong moment where he was uh, doing three rib breakers to Eric Rowan he just he, he, he kept holding him and doing rib breaker after rib breaker, really showing his strength here. Uh, Luke Harper had an awesome moment, diving out on Sheamus, and the fans just went nuts. And this was one of those matches where the fans were really invested in, and they were really cheering the Wyatt family. And I think if the Wyatt family lost here, they would really probably crap on the entire show after that. So I think it was a smart decision on the part of WWE having Bray Wyatt pin Biggie Langston here uh, for the win. And like I said, the fans were red hot tonight. They were singing, he's got the whole world in his hands. 
uh, the, with the Wyatt family, it was great to see. It, it's interesting to see that actually because usually the heels get the boos and the baby faces get the cheers. But this was one of those nights where you just say, you know what? Crap it. Never mind the whole right reaction stuff. Let's just watch this in awe. And that was one of those shows. Oh, we also saw Fandango and Summer Rae taking on Santino and Emma. This was just an okay match, but like I said, the fans uh, made the night. And they were Fandangoing. And uh, what I like is that the match really didn't need to be long at all. It was only a short match. It was booked very well. You had Emma tap out Summer Rae. And I've mentioned this before. I think Emma should be on her own and um, establish herself as a contender for the Divas Championship. So things like that, I, I would rather see happen. Now, have her split up with Santino. We don't need to see this go any further. But like I said, the fans were awesome tonight. They were, I mean, last night, they were just on fire. And... What happened after that, we, we had Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. And um, Brock Lesnar came out. You notice he had the black eye. And um, the fans were pretty much chaining bullshit to Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. And the, I, I can go on and on about, you know, the whole Undertaker and Brock Lesnar situation. The big shocker at the end where Brock Lesnar broke the streak. I mean, that's one of those things where you could probably argue that that shouldn't have happened. And you're absolutely right. It was a bad match. It was bad booking. It was a bad decision. Uh, I can understand that Undertaker wanted someone to end the streak, but the match wasn't good enough for the streak to be broken. And... Clint Bolt mentioned that in our WrestleMania 30 review, and he was, he was right about that. But with this segment, with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman coming out here, was a stroke of genius how Paul Heyman pretty much rubbed it in to all our faces, and we're all still in shock about it. I'm still in shock. I'm like, what, did the referee, <laughs> did the referee mess up or something? Well, what's going on? Until you realize, oh my god, the streak is broken. So, I love how Paul Heyman really played on it. It was genius. The way he was speaking was way over the top, and it felt right to what he was doing. He uh, talks about um, shooting from the hip and mentions that Vince McMahon was in the ambulance with The Undertaker and going back to the hospital after suffering a concussion in the back five seconds after um, he uh, went backstage. And... Um, and he mentioned that um, uh, that uh, Brock Lesnar is the one in 21 to one, and said that no one measures up to him, not even Stone Cold, not even The Rock, not even uh, The Undertaker, or even uh, Rob Van Dam, or anyone else. It was it, it was just great to see um, uh, Paul Heyman come out, do that promo. It was really smart. It got me hooked. It got me watching. And it, I, I think Paul Heyman is one of those genius talkers like Bray Wyatt. It was awesome to see Paul Heyman do what he was doing. I would have liked to see Brock Lesnar probably say a couple of things about it. But I, I, I understand it because Paul Heyman is that mouthpiece for Brock Lesnar. But uh, the thing I'm going to get to uh, later on... Uh, Pretty much, uh, I have another point of view about Paul Heyman. You'll see what I mean. We also saw Rob Van Dam come out. Uh, he um, had a match with Damian Sandow. Rob Van Dam returns. The fans were behind him. Uh, he beats Damian Sandow here, and it sucks the position that, that Damian Sandow is in right now. Uh, even c coming off of the whole John Cena cashing in his uh, briefcase on him. He just completely went downhill. And it's just... Wow. It's amazing. I can understand, you know, you can't push everyone. And that is the case here. And it, it, it just sucks that Damian Sandow is in this situation. That's all I have to say. You had Rey Mysterio taking out Bad News Barrett. Finally, 
Bad News Barrett is wrestling in the ring long overdue. Let's just run with this. Uh, I I really enjoyed this match. Even though it was an okay match, the fans were really behind Bad News Barrett there. He was over with the crowd as hell. And I like that Rey Mysterio tried. He was getting booed the heck out of this match. But at least Rey Mysterio tried. He tried his best. But it, it was just one of those situations where he really couldn't control it. So, uh, the one thing to me that I took away from this match is that finally, Bad News Barrett is back. Uh, you know, you had the whole uh, couple of gimmicks before that that really didn't work, and now he's got this. Let's just go with it. And I think that uh, hopefully good things happen with Bad News Barrett. We also saw the debut of a uh, couple of NXT uh, personalities. One was Alexander Rusev, pretty much squashing Zack Ryder here. Uh, I like that uh, at the end you had Alexander Rusev apply the camel clutch, even though this is a move that I've seen too many times before. I think he should change it, have something new, something different. Um, but I love the way that Lana comes in and uh, tells Rusev to stop break the hold, and it's pretty much, you know, the power of the woman. It, it, it just seems like he, she has control over Alexander Rusev. I mentioned this before on an NXT review. I enjoy the little things like that, and um, I, I hope great things for Alexander Rusev. I hope he doesn't turn into a Vladimir Kozlov and be Santino's sidekick in a year. So I hope that they do something smart with Alexander Rusev. Great debut. Right place, right time, the night after WrestleMania. Same with a certain diva. What happened was, was that A.G. Lee came out. She cut a really good promo here. I thought she was really good on the microphone. She mentioned about being the longest reigning diva. Well, not the longest reigning diva's champion, but uh, being that uh, uh, diva's champion that's been champion for 295 days. And um, that mentioned about this speech that she um, conveyed a couple of months ago. You know, people call it a pipe bomb. And um, pretty much saying that this was A.G. Lee uh, versus the world overcoming the odds. And saying that she's the best diva in the world. In the locker room. And of all divas to come out, Paige comes out. And um, says that um, uh, she she tells A.J. Lee congratulations. A.J. Lee comes back says I don't need your congrats. Pretty much talk, talking down to Paige. They end up having a match for the Divas Championship, and it was one of those matches where it didn't need to be a five star classic 15 minute match. It was a well told story where you had uh, Paige in short work defeat A.J. Lee. You had A.J. Lee. Uh, apply the, um, the submission hold, but AJ Lee, uh, I mean, uh, Page counters into the Page Turner. I think that could have been cleaned up a bit. The execution of it was just a little off, but the execution of the entire um, segment, I thought, was a markout, truly markout moment. It was great to see this. Page, the first ever, not only youngest Divas Champion at age 21, but she's also the NXT Women's Champion. She's the Divas Champion, and she's the Women's Champion on NXT. I love this moment. It was great. Truly markout moment. And speaking of markout moments, another great markout moment was the Ultimate Warriors promo. The, it, it was great to see, finally, for like so many years, the Ultimate Warrior is back on Raw. He wears the mask, and he was doing all the snort stuff, and it, it was just great. Um, the uh, I like that he mentioned that um, that the fans are legend makers of the Ultimate Warrior. Talked about passion and telling stories about making future stars and legends, and that the legacy and the legend of the Ultimate Warrior will live on. Uh, it was just great to see this on television. Another great markout moment. And you also had a really good storytelling 
uh, with this next segment. And it was uh, the uh, celebration of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Ceremony Award. Where you had Hulk Hogan coming, uh, coming out. And um, you had uh, the Antonio Cesaro coming out accepting the award. And Zeb Coulter uh, got on the microphone and uh, talked about how he brought up Cesaro in The Real Americans. Even though he's not a real American. He's from Switzerland. And uh, he said that he's a Zeb Coulter guy, but Antonio interrupts him and says, No, I'm not a Zeb Coulter guy. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. And I'm like, whoa, this caught me by surprise. And it's interesting. You have the whole situation with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar earlier on in the night. And then already the fans love him because he's with Cesaro right now. The transition was absolutely stunning to watch. It, it, it was weird. I'm like, usually Paul Heyman associates himself with uh, heel persona, the uh, top superstars. But this was an interesting swerve. It was great to see this happen. You, you ended up having, after uh, Jack Swagger coming out, interrupting, and pretty much attacking Cesaro and destroying the... Um, the uh, the Andre the Giant Award just mentioned it in the pieces, and you have uh, the Cesaro come back in and attacking uh, Jack Swagger, and there two of them are just going at, it, and you can feel the intensity between these two guys, and you have uh, two managers each with the uh, boats, the uh, Swagger and Zeb Coulter. You have Swagger with his original uh, mentor in Zeb Coulter, and now you have. It turns Cesaro with Paul Heyman, stroke a genius. I love that Cesaro is a Paul Heyman guy, and he can run with this as well. And I think, to me, they're doing things right with Cesaro, and I hope for great things with them. And with that said, I see Swagger going downhill. It's going to be one of those situations where... Shawn Michaels turned on Marty Jannetty. His career boosted. Marty Jannetty's career went nowhere. The same thing will probably happen with Jack Swagger and Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro will probably have that the singles run and just build it up slowly, but bit by bit by bit until he gets to the top of the mountain. And Swagger will probably end up going downhill. I see this coming from a mile away. It sucks, I know, but... For Swagger, but for Cesaro, I see great things happening. And I like that they're um, setting this up with a few between these two former tag team partners. It was the right time to do it as well, coming off after WrestleMania, because if they'd done this before WrestleMania, it would probably get lost in the shuffle. So I like that they've done it after WrestleMania. You had the thing happen at the pre show, and then. Cesaro winning the uh, Battle Royal, and now you have this. A setup. A good, solid rivalry between Swagger and Cesaro. No need to say any more. Great things. And like I said, this was one of those shows where I didn't see a lot of negatives at all. Very few. Just some nitpicky moments, but overall, this was an outstanding Raw. And then we get to the main event, and it was Daniel Bryan versus Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And usually, when you have a championship match, the challenger comes out first, so I was wondering why Daniel Bryan came out first. And earlier on, we saw Stephanie McMahon backstage talking to The Shield, and Kane said that um, you should do what I tell you to do and make sure Triple H walks out the champion what ends up happening is that when Daniel Bryan comes out, out comes Randy Orton and Batista. They get their licks in. You had Randy Orton, RKO, Daniel Bryan. You had uh, Batista, Batista Bomb, Daniel Bryan. You had Kane come out, chokeslam Daniel Bryan. And, and you're thinking, oh crap, he's going to lose the championship, right? And Triple H comes out. He's about to pin Daniel Bryan and then... Sierra Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. They come out wearing those awesome Winter Soldier masks. And um, they even the odds pretty much. And um, I see this coming again. I could see an Evolution reunion where you have Triple H, uh, 
Batista, Randy Orton taking down the Shield. Maybe at Extreme Rules. I don't know. I don't know if that's a big enough pay per view to book that match in. I could see something like that playing out in a scenario at SummerSlam. That would be a great pay-per-view to see that happen. Because it's one of those original pay-per-views. It's a, you know, it, it, it would be a better feel for a pay-per-view than, a, than a, a, an Extreme Rules pay-per-view. So I could see this whole Evolution thing, Reunion, coming to full effect again. Taking down the shield. I'd like to see this happen. The only thing is that, okay, who's going to be Daniel Bryan's opponent to the, to defend the title if they have the whole Evolution reunion and the Shield colliding in a six-man match? Will they have Kane do it, or will they have someone else do it? Uh, we'll see what happens. But overall, like I said, this episode of Raw was almost perfect. It was one of those Raws where you had to follow WrestleMania, and I think they've done it here. The fans were just absolutely on fire. They did not die down even for a second. It was a great raw. Great beginning. Great ending. Stuff in between were excellent. Great moments. It was one of those raws where you step back and say, you know what? That was one of the best raws I've seen in a long time. And usually when you have a raw... Uh, after WrestleMania, it has to follow WrestleMania, like I said, and this done just that. And if I were to rate this Raw out of 10, I, it's an easily a 9 or a 9.5. And if you saw this Raw, what did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below and let me know. While you're at it, you can hit that subscribe button down below this video. You can also follow MRB Wrestling on Twitter, and you can like us on Facebook at the Make Rock and Bolt. Wrestling Review Show. And on a final note, to all you viewers watching, get plenty of rest and always do your best.